Medpal AI have released a significant update to its wellness app alongside a strategic rollout through ePass's UK gym network. Joining us today is their CEO and founder, Jason Drummond. Jason, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Martin. Now, before we dive into what this means for the business, can you give those who may not have an opportunity to read the RNS a quick update? Yeah, so MedPal's stated goal is making healthcare accessible instantly and at ultra low cost to uh, uh, to everyone. That's our stated goal. We started off with an app um, on the uh, on Apple and, and Android devices, which aggregated data from all of your connected health devices. So we were connected to over a hundred different devices, everything from Aura Rings, Fitbits, Apple Watches, um, and many different apps. So we bring all of your data back into, into one place and give you the ability with AI to analyze that data in real time. Um, the current version, or the new version of the app, what that's doing is basically building in a history and a memory of you. Um, so the AI, rather than just looking at your data and giving you analysis of just that data, it's now taking over a much longer period of time. So it offers, the app can now do continuous observation of your data and analysis and manage of your health really over a much more extended period of time. So this is a huge uh, uh, upgrade in, in, in capability. Um, and with the access to our clinical services, so the AI can, uh, can, if it spots problems in your data, it can ask you questions and at the relevant moment, when necessary, it can actually hand you over to clinicians, to GPs, and independent prescribers, who in theory uh, could either give you ways in which you could um, uh, improve your health or ultimately on medication. Oh, well, Jason, the upgrade certainly looks impressive. I've, uh, I've been had it on my phone, as you know. Um, can you explain, though, how these new AI features set your MedPal app apart from the typical sort of fitness and wellness apps out there? Well, well firstly, we're one of the first uh, apps on the App Store uh, which actually has access to AI, to AI for AI analysis. A lot of the apps just, just, just give you the raw data of the device rather than uh, the analysis. The other thing which is really interesting about uh, our app is that obviously by taking data from different devices, we have much better data points. So for example, a Whoop, it, when it tr uh, tracks a run, it only tracks maybe one or two variables. Whereas for example, in the case of uh, an Apple Watch, it, create, it actually creates, I think it runs up to 15 different variables. So we can aggregate all of that data. And because it's building up a long-term uh, understanding of you, um, it's it's now doing this observation over a longer period of time. So that's significantly different to other products on the market. The other things we've also uh, we've added um, is the uh, we call it portable health records. So effectively now you can upload test results. You can upload results from. Uh, maybe blood test results onto the system. Uh, and it can actually give you an instant analysis of those test results. Whereas in the past, you would have to, for example, get those results on your NHS account and go and see your GP, make an appointment with your GP to get the analysis. Now uh, you can actually get the analysis directly within the app. And because they're portable, all those records are traveling with you in your MedPal app uh, with you. So uh, you have access to that wherever you need it. The AI memory function is saying it builds a continuous memory of your of your your health and your your kind of health journey. Um, and obviously this whole area of this is enhanced personalization. So it's learning all about you over time and delivering wellness and health guidance, um, which is increasingly more accurate and tailored to your individual needs. And this e passy partnership, I know we've spoken about this in the past, but this gives you access to over 11 million users. What level of engagement or adoption are you expecting from that user base? Yeah, so we, we announced the deal uh, when we when we opened in, in August. Um, e passy were waiting for this next version of the app to come out to roll it out to the gyms because they thought that the, uh, the increase in functionality was going to make it really, uh, really sticky with their user base. Obviously, they have 11 million employees on their benefits program in, in the UK, which all have gym memberships. So these are people who care about their health. They're going to the gym. So this is a perfect uh, deal for us. Um, the deal we have is we give basically the, the, the app is three pounds a month, around 30 pounds a year. We give the app for free to all of those 11 million users so we're expecting a, a you know a fairly high uh, take up um and uh, yeah it's exciting so we've started rolling out with the first few gyms um and we're expecting we you know we have a, a high level of expectation we pass this deal actually is that they've got to get us to a million uh, users um before it makes financial sense for them so they're obviously pretty confident that they're going to get us a significant number of people on their on our app well, that is actually less than ten percent, so it should be achievable. And I suppose investors are looking at this now, and they'd be saying, "Well, okay, how would you monetize that user base? I mean, what kind of conversion rates um, from the sort of 
free users that you mentioned originally then onto the paid users um, would represent, I suppose, success uh, for you? Martin, that's, that's a great a great question. I think what's interesting is that the way that the app models work now is nothing is it's not for free. Effectively, it's free for just for a period of time. So what we're saying is it's not a we don't have a free app. We have only have a pay for app because it's the the the, the AI and the app is incredible. The benefit it brings to to users is really quite phenomenal. And we start using it, it's it's uh, you, you'll kind of understand. Um, for example, if you're, you know, if you're someone who's dreading for a marathon, it can it can actually track you and uh, give you a program of how you build up to that 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 uh, uh, to achieve the marathon and so on. So it's really really uh, it offers incredible value. But effectively, when they when they get the app, if it's six months or for twelve months, um, for free initially, they're agreeing that on renewal they'll actually pay uh, the the three pounds and the thirty pounds annual fee. Um, Typically, we 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 uh, uh, we expect about thirty percent of people will continue their their uh, their subscription after um, after the initial peer period is over. And you mentioned the app is now capable of analyzing test results. Uh, you just mentioned blood results and things, but and I suppose that's building an ongoing health profile for each user. But I mean, how does that actually translate into a real world health outcomes? Can you give us an example? Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I think if you if you're a user of AI, you understand it's just getting better and better every week. Um, what's interesting about MedPal, we're we're feeding the the you know literally best in class AI. We work now with Google. We're now working with OpenAI. Um, not only are all of your current data or your current health data or your stats. So if you're wearing a you know a connected health device, it could be in real time providing huge amounts of information. I think we typically are collecting hundreds of different data points both in real time. Now with the ability to actually upload your health records you know you've now given ai a complete picture of you um and it puts in an interesting position imagine over time it's now so now this new this uh, new version of the app it's uh, with the enhanced personalization where it's basically learning all about you over time it means that if we you know if we if the ai can spot potential problems it can bring those to your attention it can it can help you um you know, give you guidance to maybe go and see a GP. We have clinical services to refer you to the GP or to an independent subscriber um, to spot problems before. Typically, at the moment, people you know take themselves to A and E when 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 they when they get the actual uh, the end result. Whereas, well, we're trying to be a much more uh, uh, spot things much earlier. Finally, then, uh, Jason, how does this app rollout strengthen the broader MedPal AI business? Model? And in particular, the connection, I suppose, I'm looking for is that connection between user engagement and the clinical fulfillment through your MedPal.clinic. Yeah, so I guess we talk about this sort of this flywheel effect. So we see that the app, we, we're investing heavily. We have, I think, 20 full-time developers working on the app at any one time. This is a big investment for us, but we see that as part of the flywheel of not only in terms of data collection aggregation, AI is only good as the data you give it. So the more data you give it, the better results you get for your users. But also we see it as really is a way of bringing in users um, and the AI, it, you know, we've been training it specifically around um, certain medications, for example, that we can prescribe. So if it can see um, that you're, you know, you're on a weight loss journey, it understands your weight, it's got your BMI, it sees you're going to the gym two or three times uh, a week. So, you know, it can take a view as to, uh, uh, you know, are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to get healthier? You've got your BMI high, the BMI is coming down. If you're not getting, if you're not, for example, getting uh your BMI, your weight down as quickly as you might want. The AI can say that well, you, you seem to be on a weight loss journey. Uh, we have a, uh, you know, a clinic business. Would you like to have a referral? Have you considered, for example, um, going on to GLP-1s on someone Jaro Wagobi? Then actually the, the AI can then pass you over to our clinic business uh, and then you can actually buy the, the medication you need if, if, if uh, ultimately the, it requires the clinicians to sign it off. But um, the AI can, you know, can actually direct you in that way if it thinks you're on a sort of weight loss journey. So the, the things are really very, very tightly integrated. Um, it's obviously good for us because it drives traffic to the, to the clinic and it drives obviously business to the, the pharmacy, but ultimately it's just trying to give people better health outcomes. Well, Jason, you've certainly been a busy, uh, busy man. And I'm looking forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Martin.